Good morning. Today's poem is Poppies by Jane Weir. Uh, it's another poem in the, the collection that really focuses on responses to war and again personal responses to war and all of the ones that I've done so far, war photographer, remains, kamikaze, all link around that sort of theme and so work together as a, a set of poems that, that you could link together really, really well. Quite an emotional poem. Um, you've got the, the sense of the love between the, the mother and her son, the pride, uh, but also hints all the way through uh, of the impending danger that the son is putting himself into in joining the army. Poppies. Three days before Armistice Sunday and poppies had already been placed on individual war graves. Before you left, I pinned one onto your lapel. Crimped petals, spasms of paper red, disrupting a blockade of yellow bias binding around your blazer. Sellotape bandaged around my hand. I rounded up as many cap hairs as I could, smoothed down your shirt's upturned collar, steeled the softening of my face. I wanted to graze my nose across the tip of your nose, play at being Eskimos like we did when you were little. I resisted the impulse to run my fingers through the gelled black thorns of your hair. All my words flattened, rolled, turned into felt, slowly melting. I was brave as I walked with you to the front door, threw it open, the world overflowing like a treasure chest. A split second and you were away, intoxicated. After you'd gone, I went into your bedroom, released a songbird from its cage. Later, a single dove flew from the pear tree. And this is where it has led me, skirting the churchyard walls, my stomach busy making tucks. Darts, pleats, hatless, without a winter coat or reinforcement of scarf, gloves. On reaching the top of the hill, I traced the inscriptions on the war memorial, leaned against it like a wishbone. The dove pulled freely against the sky, an ornamental stitch. I listened, hoping to hear your playground voice catching on the wind. In this first part of the analysis of the poem. We're going to look at the first couple of stanzas um, and we'll stop just before the end of the second stanza actually because the third stanza has one of those key enjambements um, that those run on lines that, that run from one stanza to the next like we've looked at in previous videos. Um, but in the first stanza what we need to look out for is the sense of the developing relationship between the, the mother and the child, how Jane Weir has established that really close connection between um, the, the, the son and the mother um, in, in both the, the pride in going off to war, but also a very deep personal connection built up, obviously, through the, the love of, um, of the two of them through, through his childhood. So we begin three days before Armistice Sunday. Um, Armistice Sunday, another name for Remembrance Sunday in November, of course, that day where uh, we all stop to reflect the contributions uh, of the armed services and, and remember those who've died in, in conflicts uh, that, have, that have happened across the world. So three days before Armistice Sunday and poppies had already been placed on individual war graves. So initially we've got the, the sense of the military, we've got the sense of um, the the, the pride um, in, in the armed services, but we've also got that um, hint of, of, of death that's around, the hint of the, the tragedy the, that is to come. Now Jane Weir wrote this poem um, that was published in The Guardian in 2009. At the time there, really important contextual information, um, the British were still involved in Afghanistan. Um, it was a few years after the, the uh, initial conflict with Iraq and there was an investigation, an inquiry at that time into uh, the, the British involvement in Iraq and so there was growing anxiety around uh, the armed services, growing anxiety about um, our men and women fighting overseas and Carol Ann Duffy uh, who was Poet Laureate at the time commissioned some poetry around our military, around um, our responses to the military and it's really nice to hear um, uh, a, a woman's response to war uh, because mostly when we read about war and we think about war poetry it's, it's men's voices that we hear. In this case we've got Jane Weir and very much um, a, a personal response as a mother um, with, with a child away at war um, during the armed services. 
So uh, three days for Armistice Sunday, poppies had already been placed on individual war graves. So we've got the, the sense of the, the soldiers of individuals. Um, we've got the, the setting of the time in, in November. We've got the, the tone established of, of remembrance, um, of pride uh, around the, the armed services. And then we start to move into the more personal. And notice the use of the second person, you, all the way through the poem. This is uh, a memorial, almost a eulogy, a letter style, very deeply personal from the narrator to her son, um, from um, a mother to her son. Uh, before you left, I pinned one onto your lapel. Now we imagine now um, the way that mothers do fuss over us, don't they, and, and smooth the hair and... Uh, make sure our ties are straight and our coats are straight and, and the mother has pinned the poppy onto her son uh, and we imagine him possibly going out to to parade um, as part of the army or is it more um, before that time where uh, he's remembering as, as a child as we all do put the poppies on round about November time before you left I pinned one onto your lapel crimped petals spasms of paper red disrupting a blockade of yellow bias binding around your blazer. Now, the blazer could be a school blazer. My personal reading is that it's probably the, um, the regimental uniform for, for the armies when, um, when they parade for remembrance and, and other formal occasions. And so, although her son has joined the army and is a fully fledged adult, has a very responsible uh, and difficult job, the mother can't forget her role as a mother and can't forget to see her son as her child, her baby, the person that she's brought into the world and cradled and nurtured and brought up to be the man he is now, which of course brings that, that sense of pride that, that she has for him. Um, notice that the mother is doing all of the actions the son is just in in receipt of those despite his responsibilities it's the mother who feels that she's still mothering him that that feels she's still got a role to play as as the parent um there are some interesting uh images here the crimped petals um the sense that the the, the poppy has perhaps been slightly damaged been cut in a certain way uh, which again hints at the the danger later on in the poem spasms of paper red really important to look at interesting word choices like like spasms um, and and spasms to me connote pain connote misery connote connote suffering um, and again it's all of those little hints of of the danger that the son puts himself through by by joining up to the army and of course the the ultimate tragedy at the end of the poem uh, disrupting a blockade of yellow bias binding around your blazer so the poppy that has has been pinned onto the lapel and we can imagine on that lapel um some sort of yellow outline um which might be regimental um which has been interrupted by the poppy but what's really interesting is the juxtaposition between the military language and the very home personal um, domesticated language which I've highlighted here so we've got the poppies um, the the international symbol of, of remembrance we've got the blockade you know interrupting the the blockade disrupting a blockade of yellow bias binding around your blazer really interesting word choices a blockade again would be something we'd expect the military to enforce um, the blazer itself and an armistice not remembrance on Sunday but armistice Sunday it's official military title the armistice referring to um, the 11th of November back in 1918 at the end of the First World War after which Armistice Day um, is, is named. And we've got all of those juxtaposed with very domesticated images so this son who's now in the army has got cat hairs all over him as we go into the second stanza um, and in order to, to show her pride and to show her son at her best the, the mother has wrapped sellotape around her hand inside out so that she can dab at the um at, at the cat hers and, and clean him of those a very typical mother 
motherly interaction with her child, wanting him to look as, as good, um, as presentable as, as he possibly can be. We've got the cat hers themselves, you know, the, the idea of a, of a home pet is just so normal. Um, and yet it's interrupted by this lack of normality in, in the, the son's job. Uh, play at being Eskimos. Um, I don't know whether you ever did this with, with, with your parents, but the idea that as, as a greeting, as a bit of fun, you rub noses together um, is, is something that perhaps we don't do now so much. Um, but, but it's supposed to be reminiscent of, of the greeting of the, um, the, the populations in, uh, in Greenland, in, in northern Canada, um, who, who greet each other in that way. And it's, it's kind of a, a fun mother-child, father-child type interaction. So we've got that clear juxtaposition between the military and their home life. The son we don't hear from, of course, because it's it's very much the, the mother's story. But but we get the sense that the son goes along with this, although he's grown up, although he's responsible, although he's an adult now. Um, there's there's no hint here that he doesn't accept all of this mothering. Um, but being a parent, you can't stop that that nurturing of your children you can't stop uh, being a parent you can't stop that love and and you always want your your children to to grow up and be too successful but at the same point um, you always remember them as, as much smaller you remember your role as a as a nurturer as a carer and that juxtaposition shows that perfectly well sellotape bandaged around my hand I rounded up as many white cat hairs as I could smooth down your shirts upturned collar you know going round and turning the collar down uh, making him look presentable all of these things that we're so familiar with and then steeled the softening of my face um this metaphor is very much um the mother trying to hold back tears uh she's very proud of him she's worried about him being in, in the military but she doesn't want her son to see that worry she wants him to see her smiling to see um her pride which is always there but not the emotional pride that that comes with being a mother um and as a as a soldier they're they're trained obviously to try and uh, repress as much of that emotion really and, and become hardened um to fighting and so there's that interesting juxtaposition the mother has steeled has turned to steel her face um so it becomes harder hardened rather than the softening um of the emotions of the tears that that she feels are, are ready to flow i wanted to graze my nose across the tip of your nose play it being eskimos like we did when you were little uh, we talked about that image but for for the mother it's it's all the memories that that come flooding back that um that that this pride in this human being that she's created going off to do his dream job as as a member of the armed forces um you know that 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 sense of um all of the the dreams coming to fruition so it's it's an incredibly proud moment um but it all makes her think back at all of the steps that have come up to to this particular moment I resisted the impulse to run my fingers through the gelled black thorns of your hair. Um, and we'll pause at that particular image because that's our key quote for this part of the presentation on, on remains. Um, the gelled black thorns of your hair. Um, I talked in one of the other uh, poems, I think it was Kamikaze, about interesting collocations. A collocation, words that, that go together. Um, and images are created by unusual collocations really clear interesting word choices uh, and this is very much one of those the gelled black thorns of your hair so we can imagine his quite short hair um lots of gel into perhaps tiny spikes you know in in, in a sort of fashionable way the gelled hints at his youth you know if, if you think about teenagers typically gelling their hair making themselves look as nice as possible there's a point in your 20s after which you no longer use gel um, but at this point he's still young he's still a young adult he may only be a teenager we don't know but the gelled hair gives that hint at his youth and that in itself makes the poem more tragic it's a young life cut off um, much too early of course um, these are the emotions shared so often tragically um, by by so many parents who see their children go off to war and, and, and their lives cut short. So that hint at youth is so important. 
But the blackthorns, this metaphor of, of the hair as blackthorns. Now, blackthorns are sort of brambles, natural brambles, um, you know, tiny little spikes that, that can cause pain. And again, it might hint back to a childhood memory of getting caught in the blackthorns. But also it's that hint of a sense of danger and, and violence in, in a number of different ways, both the danger and violence that um, the, the son is putting himself into by, by going off to war, but also in a way that's reminiscent slightly of bayonet charge. The son himself has to become violent, has to become um, dangerous in order to succeed and, and survive um, in the armed forces. So it suggests that his hair is sharp, reflecting metaphorically the the the, the toughness of the soldier the toughness um, of of his persona um, as he goes off to war so really interesting collocation there with lots of um, metaphorical readings the gelled blackthorns the youth but also the the hardness uh, of being the soldier